death. Time being millions of years and death. Millions of years, death, suffering, disease, bloodshed. People are crying out, if you're a God of love, then why do you do these things? Or um, Ted Turner, he says, I was taught that God was love and was powerful. And I couldn't understand how someone so innocent should remain, be made or allowed to suffer. And then Charles Darwin, Annie's cruel death destroyed Charles' tatters of belief in a moral, just universe. Later he would say, at this period chimed the final death knell of his Christianity. They like to call him St. Charles. Now took a stand as an unbeliever. People are looking to blame God. But God made a perfect world. A world free of suffering, free of shame, free of death. And man, with the guidance of Satan, brought all this into us. When looking at God, they see death as an enemy. They want to blame God for death. But when they look at death in the evolutionary religion, it is hailed as the hero that needs to be worshipped. Isn't that an odd idea? So what is the connection between evolution and paganism? Both oppose God and His Word, and both tend to love death. Proverbs 8.36 again, But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. They worship death as a hero. First Corinthians, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Amen? Amen. Our last enemy is death, and it will be destroyed. Revelation 21.4, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. I am so grateful that God is able to keep this promise, and that God is faithful to keep this promise, and that he can be trusted that there will be no more death. When Jesus comes in the clouds of glory, the dead in Christ are raised, and we which alive remain shall be caught up in the clouds together with them, and we will spend eternity with Jesus. We'll spend eternity sharing our testimony of how God changed our lives. It's hard to fathom an eternity but it never ends, and there is no more death. So how do we really arrive at such a paganistic culture? Well, Judges 21, 25 says, in those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his what? Own eyes. His own eyes. And that's still true today. I remember hearing this young lady said, well, my God wouldn't do that. Well, how many gods are there? Titus 1.15, to the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and believing, nothing is pure, but even their mind and consciences are defiled. Psalm 18, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. That's really our only safety, isn't it? That really means mankind, it means men and women, it's not just the men of us who are making all these mistakes. We cannot put trust in a man-focused worldview. We must put our trust in a biblical worldview and share that with our families and our friends and our neighbors. Because Jesus did for us what we cannot do for ourselves. God had all these animals, but the animals could not accomplish an infinite sacrifice. They could only symbolize God's ultimate goal in the salvation of the world, which was to provide that infinite sacrifice. 1 Peter 2, 4, 2 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. In Acts 4, 12, nor is there salvation in any others, for there is no other name under heaven given among men which we must be saved. I remember a presidential election. And a, uh, a preacher was running. 
and he's in New York, and he was being interviewed. And he said, you know, we have all these Jews here in New York, and they don't believe in Jesus like you do. How will they go to heaven? I was so disappointed when he said, everybody has to find his own way. The Bible says there is no other name in which we can be saved. Our only access to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Through trusting Him. Through letting Him take control of our lives and give us victory over our sins. Romans 5.10 For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. I didn't say might be, did it? It says we shall be. So we need to live confident in Jesus Christ. Not in ourselves, because there's nothing that we can trust in ourselves, but we can live confident and triumphant in Jesus Christ. Hebrews 2, 3. How should we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? The solution is to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. To be transformed. Remember when that little caterpillar crawls in that cocoon? That ugly looking caterpillar? And comes out as that beautiful, gracious butterfly. That's what God wants to do for us. That caterpillar cannot crawl in that cocoon and change himself. It is a miracle that takes place. And the same is true for us. We cannot change ourselves. We cannot defeat sin by our own powers. We cannot transform ourselves. We must trust Jesus and be transformed by the new in our lives. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, a lot of our kids are going to be out, a lot of children are going to be out, Lord, trick or treating, and they have no idea what it's about. They have no idea that it's the worship of the dead. Lord, help us to be ambassadors for Christ. Not only just, not only just Halloween, but every day of our life. Help us to be ambassadors for you through acts of kindness, through acts of compassion. Help us to uplift Jesus in our lives and in the people we come in contact with. Help us to seize those divine opportunities and be the kind of Christian that people will say, if that's a Christian, that's what I want to be. Help us, Lord, empower us, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
devil because you've already gained that victory. And Lord, we recognize our struggles is because we've not surrendered ourselves to you. Lord, today, let it be a new day for us. Surrender to you and allowing you to have control of our hearts and our minds. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.